Hi, I'm Deborah Gray. And I'm Lauren Skager. And today we're going to talk about an important aspect of self-care, which is emotional self-care, and specifically how to deal with toxic friends. So there, let's just say in general, there are friends who are jealous of you and or critical of you. Um, there are friends who are needy and always want all of your attention, but it's, you know, they never have time for, for you when you have a problem. And then there's also the drama queen, um, the person who seems to either always be at the center of a drama or things just seem to happen to them or they create drama. Yeah, or they're feeding into it excessively. Right. But, um, but it can be, unless you're the type of person who, who enjoys it, it can be really exhausting to be friends with someone who's like that. So you had some a couple things to say about about toxic friends in general. Yeah. I mean, I've had plenty of them, and I'll be honest, I've been toxic to my friends in the past. And I asked somebody I knew uh, to give a quote about this, and he said, um, "When being friends with someone with the benefits." When the benefits of being friends with someone start or stop outweighing the downsides, that's when you know you need to like end things. And if they get to the point where they're just being a complete terrible person, just just leave. Don't don't give them. Well, we yeah, we're gonna talk about hesitation. about what to do. Um, I mean, the problem is when you're in like middle school or high school, it's it's a lot harder to like break up with a friend than it yeah. is once you're out in the world um you know once once you're in college you probably don't you know even if you go to college with someone that you're you know a friend that you stop seeing you don't see them that much um yeah. but when you're in middle school and high school you're going to see them all the time and you may also share friends so you may be part of a group and then also the problem can be what if um you know your friends all get caught in the middle yeah um, so you you don't want to do that um, you want to try to avoid that if possible I think sometimes also we don't want to see that this person is toxic because you know we care about them and um, you know no one's all good or all bad um, and clearly people who are toxic in this way they have problems um, so you may feel like you don't want to abandon them. Um, and they may be someone you've been friends with for a long time. So there are a lot of reasons why why it can be really hard to pull away. But the thing is, if you have depression or anxiety, the last thing you need is... is someone that's ruining yeah, your fucking life. I mean, let's say you have anxiety and you are friends with a drama queen. That's so you're constantly be... stressed out and anxious. That's going to make your life a living right, hell. Right. By the situations this person is causing, you're worrying all the time about their situation, about the fact that you're in the middle. And again, you have to always keep in, your, in mind the importance of your own self-care, your own emotional health versus your friends. Okay. Because you can't ever put their emotional health first. The, the next thing to do after you recognize that there is a problem with your friend being toxic is um, you, you have to give them a chance. You have to talk to them. Um, so talk to them. Um, tell them how you see the problem and tell them how it, you feel when they do certain things. So, you know, if they're the, the critical friend who always pretends um, like uh, you're the one who's overly sensitive or they were just kidding you can say you know f find a you know good time to talk and say you know listen um, it really bothers me when you criticize me like you did the other day when you said you know such and such and um, and um, I know that you think that I'm the problem and maybe I am overly sensitive but the thing is is that it really bothers me and it hurts my feelings. So let's say um, that you don't really get anywhere when you tell them how you feel. Um, 
if it's it fits the person who's always critical of you or they do mean things like talking about you behind your back um then you have to say listen um you know remember we talked about this nothing seems to have changed and i think that we should should probably just not really spend much time together anymore with that kind of person if you've talked to them and there's and they're not recognizing it that it it's hurtful or they have some need you know i had a friend who um whose father was verbally abusive so she grew up with all with thinking that that was normal to always be critical of people you know yeah. even people you love and that there wasn't anything wrong with it and so there wasn't really anywhere else i could could go with that so um um i just had to you know say i i just think that we should shouldn't really spend time together anymore um when it comes to someone like the drama queen then one idea is to set boundaries um uh, the drama queen or the the needy friend um, is to set boundaries. Um, let's say they call you or um, text you, and um, normally you know you're there for them a hundred percent. One thing to do is to say, um, I've I've got about twenty minutes um, to talk to you, but I'm pretty busy, so let me know what's going on. Now it's not, it's very possible they'll say, well. You know, if you don't care enough, you know, and I'll get in a huff. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Then, you know, then, then that's their problem. Okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with setting boundaries and, and saying, you know, I, I have a life and I'm not a full-time therapist. Um, if it's the drama thing, then, you know, when, when they start going on about this person or that person, you can say, you know what, I, I only have a certain amount of emotional bandwidth to deal with drama and um let, let's try to keep this down to again about 20 minutes a day is that is that good for you if they just stare at you like what say you know we talk about this stuff all the time yeah right yeah you can't talk while yawning shush late night yeah shush what were you gonna say? Uh, there, yeah, there. I know, and have known people who. It's hard to get a word in edgewise because they're always talking about themselves, and you don't have a time. You don't have time to talk about yourself. So, it, it is good to set a boundary, like, "Hey, man, chill." Or we've been talking about your stuff for the last half hour. For talking for about three hours about yeah. how you. The once got a hair in your soup. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, the needy person and the drama, I mean, they're somewhat different, but I mean, we've definitely, yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, you know, the one, one other thing to talk about is problematic. Um, the person who threatens to harm themselves or commit suicide if you don't continue to be their friend or pay you know a lot of attention to them you know That's it's it's very... yeah it's it's very tricky um and it's not uncommon uh, it's, it's not uncommon very... and so if if for some so clearly this is someone who should be in therapy if they um for some reason can't be in therapy it's really tough but you know i'm not saying you would cut them off but just you got to cut down on the amount of time that you give them yeah because it's you know it more likely than not someone who's really needy is not giving anything back it you know it's rare that usually when you you start to talk about yourself then they want everything to be back on them so it's it's usually an all or nothing proposition um so just to try to cultivate other friends um don't totally cut the person off but definitely cut down on the amount of time you spend with them because you know it's it's going to be all about them i'd like to take a moment to share some of my personal experience with these kinds of people i as i said previously i will admit i have been 
a toxic friend before, and I will readily admit that I have been toxic. And I try not to be these days. I do sometimes end up being toxic, but I've had a lot of friends over the years, a lot of whom have been toxic. Like, for example, one of my best friends, still best friends, he was very needy. He basically, he became like my only friend. He pulled me away from most of my other friends yeah. and he's working on himself now and that's good. And then there's people like my ex-girlfriend who was incredibly needy, caused a whole lot of drama and then one day, luckily, blew up at me, stopped talking to me, continued to talk a whole lot of a lot of uh, unsavory things and lies about me, and you know what? Who cares at this point? Separated from that person now, they're still a terrible person. I hate them, but um, what can you do if, as long as you're separated from people well, that cause you anguish? Then... I I think um I think that there's a little bit of a lesson in that in that at your age you don't always recognize the stuff, but I think with her um. Uh, or situations like that, um, it's a it's a good idea to to first of all talk to them um, before things get to the point where you're where it's just like scorched earth. It, it um, went full scorched earth. Yeah, um, it's I'm not saying that that's always going to solve the problem um, because some people just are are so far away from recognizing. Um, what's what's wrong with them I have to also as i said think about is there something in me that makes me want to be needed that's great you know there's there are lots of things you can do you can volunteer at, at, at an old folks home you can teach little kid you know younger kids to read i mean there are a lot of things you can or do, do be, math or just... you know a lot of different things but if if you realize that your your need for being needed has to be met by someone like that who's really needy then that's that's the time you also need to be concerning yeah you you know is when you you should see about getting the therapy another thing is in these toxic relationships sometimes what you're trying to do is work through uh your relationship with a parent um you know for instance if there's a parent who's you have a parent who's really critical you may end up being friends with someone who also is really critical. And um, while it's obviously a good idea to to work through this stuff, the problem is is you're really not going to get anywhere um, uh, productive uh, in a toxic relationship with a toxic friend. Um, so you're really better off going into therapy um, with someone who can look at the situation ob objectively and say, um, okay, this is what's going on. Uh, this is, you know, let's start working on it. Um, because um, you, you're just never going to get anywhere productive, you know, just, just trying to work it out in, in this relationship with this person who's got their own problems. Okay. So we put some links below in the description um, to articles that are helpful, that I found really helpful. And um, uh, so I hope the video itself has been helpful and if it has, I mean, that's our goal. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, um, if it has, please consider giving us a like and, um, also please consider subscribing if you want to see more videos, um, especially about, um, self-help when you have depression or anxiety as a teen or a kid. Um, that's what we're going to be focusing on most of the time. And um, that's it, right? Yep. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.